Welcome back to the MQT Sparkplug Essentials. In this part of the series, we are going to cover the components of any Sparkplug infrastructure. There are five pieces of critical components and infrastructure you have in any Sparkplug scenario. Number one, a primary application or SCADA IIoT host, edge of network nodes or EON nodes, devices and sensors, MQTT application nodes, and an MQTT broker. Let's dive into all the components in detail. Number one, primary application. The primary application is a critical piece of software for any Sparkplug infrastructure. It's also called SCADA host or IIoT host. So people who are familiar with SCADA systems know that uh, there are critical pieces of um, software like SCADA systems who have a supervision of everything that happens on the shop floor or generally the system you want to monitor. So you have the surveillance component, but also you can act on specific things. And with Sparkplug also, this SCADA system IIoT host has a central view of all the edge of network nodes, devices, and also applications and all the, the pieces you have. And um, yeah, everything reports basically to that. This also means it needs a, a connection to the MQT broker so it can get all data. So the SCADA host, IIoT host or primary application is not only interested in the data, but also, of course, in the state. So is a PLC online or offline? Is an application uh, consuming or not? So you get the central view uh, of healthiness also what's happening. Number two, edge of network nodes. This is one of the most interesting pieces of software in any Sparkplug infrastructure. Very often you will see um, the word gateway also used here because very often in IoT scenarios, you have your devices um, and your sensors or even PLCs and chances are that not everything is uh, able to connect to a Sparkplug infrastructure themselves. And very often you don't even want to do that because you want to have a separation um, also on the shop floor or the manufacturing floor. And the edge of network nodes is, bas node is basically a gateway that bridges other technologies like OPC UA, Modbus or other things to a Sparkplug infrastructure. And the great part is these edge of network nodes also not only, let's say, for example, pull data from an OPC UA enabled device, but they will also maintain the state. So if, for example, the Edge of Network node notices that a specific PLC is not reachable anymore, then it will also report to the broker and eventually to the SCADA system that this PLC is not online anymore or is unhealthy. So they have a critical role. Mm, edge of Network nodes, they have a lot of different, um, let's say, shapes and forms. So you have different vendors who will sell you that. You can also build your own with open source components. Uh, but in general, it's really one of the critical pieces you have for bridging OT technology to Sparkplug and uh, especially for devices that cannot speak MQT themselves. Number three, devices. In a Sparkplug infrastructure, you can have devices that can speak directly MQTT Sparkplug, or you will have devices and sensors that um, are not able to speak uh, MQTT directly, and so you need to have an Azure Network node uh, which bridges the technology these uh, devices and sensors use um, in order to bring that to Sparkplug. If you have a PLC, for example, that is able to speak MQTT Sparkplug directly, then you can absolutely directly um, connect yourself to the Sparkplug infrastructure, which means to the MQTT broker. If you have a device uh, or sensor which uh, speaks a proprietary protocol or other open protocols like OPC UA, uh, then you really need an edge of network node in between so you can bridge the proprietary technology to the open MQTT Sparkplug infrastructure. So chances are you have many of these devices and sensors and it's also very important as we have seen with the primary application that uh, the state of these devices is managed in a way that the SCADA system or primary application can monitor what's happening in the field 
and also act on that. So um, if you can, it makes sense to directly connect to Sparkplug. But again, especially in Brownfields environments, you really want to have an Azure Network node, which then manages also the state of your devices and sensors. Number four, MQTT application nodes. Besides the things you have on the OT side, which are PLCs, devices, and sensors and gateways, you usually also have systems that are interested in the data produced, but also want to send data back into the MQTT Sparkplug infrastructure. And application nodes could be, for example, historians, it could be analytics systems, it could be manufacturing execution systems, or even ERP systems directly. So there are many different technologies which you want to bring into a Sparkplug infrastructure. And especially in a cloud native world, which we have today, where, um, you, where companies also want to bring OT technology together with IT technology, there could even be applications that your company develops themselves, like microservices, which want to consume data from Sparkplug, but also send data back in. So an MQT application node is really any MQTT enabled, uh, let's say pro a data processor or application general that can connect to a Sparkplug infrastructure. And frankly, the options are endless here and we've seen a lot of companies who use a traditional Sparkplug infrastructure and build their own applications and benefit from bringing all the data um, from the OT system to the, the IT landscape and thus breaking up silos. Last but not least, number five, MQTT brokers. You need one MQTT broker for your Sparkplug infrastructure. In a traditional way, you really want to have the broker very local to the devices. Um, sometimes you want to have the broker in the cloud, depends on the use case, but very often you want to have a local broker, and then if you can bridge data to the cloud. If you want to start with a cloud broker, there are three options available, which you can see, for example, on HiveMQ Cloud, but there are also other uh, vendors available. But be sure that you use a 100% MQTT um, compatible MQTT broker, which unfortunately you cannot find on the IoT offerings of AWS, Azure, or Google. But also here there are options available, so you can use any 100% specification conforming broker on any of these clouds if you want to do that. But again, traditionally you want to have the broker very near to your devices and your applications, so usually you deploy brokers directly on the shop floor or nearby. It's very important though, if you're going to production, that you make sure you have a proper permission system set up with policies and uh, you're also thinking about things like high availability. So there are open source brokers available like HiveMQ Community Edition or Mosquito, which people use for the POCs. But if you want to go to production with Sparkplug, I would really urge you to look into a production ready MQTT broker uh, that is suited for Sparkplug. Okay, so these are the five components. So in a summary, we have primary applications, edge of network nodes, devices, MQT application nodes, and MQT brokers you will need for a Sparkplug infrastructure. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe below. Also give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw and see you for the next video.